In 1949, oil geologist Dr. M. King Hubbard developed the theory of oil depletion, making the prediction that the fossil fuel era would be very short. In 1956, he forecasted that American oil production in the continental 48 states would reach peak production in 1970. Production did peak that year, as he predicted. In 1974, Hubbard testified to a Senate subcommittee warning of the dangers of declining fossil fuels in an exponential growth culture. The U.S. oil peak in 1970, combined with a crisis in the Middle East, led to severe oil shortages and an economic crisis in the country. Americans experienced record high interest rates, long gas lines, the highest gasoline prices in history, recession, and a declining stock market. Government films were produced explaining the problem. We were caught by surprise with a crisis that could recur and recur unless the entire country recognized the dangers of a quite real energy shortage. Our industrial progress and economic growth was fired by what many seemed to look on as endless energy. But warning signs were there. I think it's going to end with everybody changing their, their habits. During this time, gas purchases were restricted to every other day, long gas lines appeared, and the speed limit was lowered. President Carter formed a task force, which in 1980 published the Global 2000 Report to the President. The report pointed out that by the year 2000, half of all the oil available in the world would have been consumed. Carter had begun a new energy policy. Tax credits were offered for alternative energy, and wind turbines began to appear on the landscape. But then Alaska's Prudhoe Bay and the oil fields of the North Sea came online. The oil crisis eased and prices dropped. Carter's call for frugality and care was rejected. Ronald Reagan moved into the White House and dramatically cut research and development for alternative energy. It was morning in America again, and the country went to sleep for a generation. But the problem didn't go away, as oil consumption continued to increase year after year. In 1997, petroleum geologist Dr. Colin Campbell wrote The Coming Oil Crisis. Three years later, he founded the Association for the Study of Peak Oil, known as ASPO, and held the first meeting on peak oil in Sweden in 2002. Dr. Ken DeFay, a Princeton oil geologist, published Hubbard's Peak in 2001, followed two years later by Richard Heinberg's seminal work, The Party's Over. In 2005, Matt Simmons' book, Twilight in the Desert, challenged the stated oil reserves of Saudi Arabia. A flood of books and magazines began to appear on the market. 25 books were published in 2004 and 2005, and hundreds of articles in newspapers and magazines. The long sleep of the 80s and 90s is coming to an end, and with no more preparation than in 1970, global peak oil is arriving. Peak oil is the point in time when oil production reaches its maximum. And that doesn't mean that we're running out. What it means is that we're going to have a continuous decline in production from that point. Peak oil occurs when a reservoir is ab about half empty. Reservoir pressure drops to the halfway point, and so less and less oil will be extracted each year. World oil production grew slowly until the 1950s then accelerated until the late 1970s, dipped for a few years because of the Mideast crisis, and then began increasing again. In a few years, we'll hit the ultimate peak when half the world's oil will be gone. Oil production will begin to decline. At the same time, world oil demand will continue to grow, and world population is increasing along with it. What peaks is not total oil, it's the easy oil to produce. What's left is the less desirable oil that you couldn't get out in the first place very fast. It takes more energy to produce, and a far smaller quantity comes from each well.
Oil is finite, natural gas is finite, coal, uranium, all these are finite fuels. So there's going to be a peak for all of these, and peak oil is just the beginning. The effect on our culture could be extreme. Our economy and our way of life are based on consuming oil and other fossil fuels. Each person in the U.S. consumes the yearly per capita equivalent of 10 barrels of oil for food, 9 barrels of oil for automobiles, and 7 barrels of oil for their homes. The major use of fossil fuels is for food production. What peak oil means is essentially a limited supply. World oil discovery peaked in the mid-1960s and has been declining ever since. Right now we're consuming about five barrels of oil for every one that we discover. That is an unsustainable amount and can't be continued much longer. But at the same time we have increasing demand throughout the world, especially in developing countries like China. Now, in 1993, China had 733,000 cars on the road, and by the start of 2004, they had 6 million cars. By the end of 2004, they had 8 million cars. They've convinced people that it's nice to drive. Well, the whole vision for these developing countries is that they're going to be like America someday, and that the people are going to be able to consume the way that Americans have consumed. But that's not going to be able to happen. And that's not even possible for America. Americans won't be able to consume like Americans today.